He deserves a proper start to this clip. Chris Cole, another super chat, jumping in. Thank you so much, Chris Cole, Victims of Family Law. Are we going to continue spearheading Victims of Family Law moving forward together? Absolutely. I think that's a, a really critical uh, part of the freedom movement that's come out of this campaign that I'm, I, I'm really grateful that Chris Cole in particular and, and everybody supporting him, everybody who's been a part of the, the Facebook group and spreading that message and encouraging me to talk about family law issues and, and incorporate that more into our message and the platform. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you know, what manifestation does that take if you don't have a, a party or a candidate or, or a caucus or something else? I don't know. Um, and I, I haven't had the time to give that much thought one way or another after this weekend. Uh, if I'm the nominee, we're still going to go ahead to the on, on you know, in-person convention, but we get to at least take a little time to step back and and ask some of these questions about what have we learned over the last few months you know and if i'm the nominee being able to say how can i best represent the party how can we take advantage of this opportunity and really see what resources become available as the nominee or to whomever the nominee happens to be chris cole for five dollars what do you believe are the catalysts for not only waking people up but what creates their motivation to take action you know chris i'm, I'm really glad that you're turning the attention to these these bigger serious issues the catalysts for waking people up generally are thought of as discontent of some kind right anger starvation when the system fails to provide for basic human needs but there's also just a, a, a sort of potential gap when and, and to me i've crossed this threshold it's not just hey, we could be here and all this excess productivity and wealth created by humanity is being stolen by government. But most people don't see that. They don't, and, and so showing people that there is an element of education and awareness and motivation requires empowerment. And, and that's what I love about politics and what I, I hope to represent for the Libertarian Party is that this, this hey, we, we don't have to be helpless anymore. We can, we, we want to just say, screw this whole centralized system. We can do it. That's empowerment. You know, saying, hey, we can elect an, a, a kinder, gentler tyrant. We can go off the cliff at 10 miles an hour instead of 70 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour. I think that's, you, that has to be a part of it, that element of, uh, of empowerment, of hope. And so, Chris, you know, as, as the director of Victims of Family Law for Kokesh, there are a number of catalysts within that that I'm very excited about. One, a common identity. When people don't feel alone, they feel like they can band together. That's a catalyst. And seeing each other as, as uh, yourself, admitting that you are a victim of family law is a huge part of that. You know, getting people to see the collective victimization that we that we experience under government. I think that's going to be a big catalyst as well. Chris Cole weighing in with a $20 super chat, our organizer of Victims of Family Law for Kokesh writes, what were your biggest takeaways through our interview with Dr. Warren Farrell, author of The Boy Process, Boy Crisis, and Mark Savant of Act to Dad? So, you know, Chris Cole has been uh, a huge encouragement for me, a source of encouragement to make sure that this message of localization really stays connected to issues that people care about. And Victims of Family Law is a, a really critical way uh, to connect with people. As CJ's pulling up uh, some, some pictures here, can you get the, the Victims of Family Law page on, on the screen here? You've got Chris Cole's page if people wanna look up Chris Cole and, and connect with him, a, a very passionate activist about this. And it's, it's really a big deal to see, you know, not just Dr. Warren Farrell and, um, and Mr. Savant talking about, you know, their experiences and saying, you know, we can't just let this go because that, <clears throat> that I mean, if, if you want to talk, there, there's so many individual takeaways, you know, and, and with the boy cross crisis with, with Dr. Farrell's work, I, I was kind of familiar with this from having watched the Red Pill documentary and read some of the associated works and being familiar with some of Stefan Molyneux's earlier work. But, you know, and, and, and with 
with Mark, it, with Acta Dad, it's it's actually, you know, a bigger connection with what I see is happening, and 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 this is my biggest takeaway from that 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 I really want to encourage people more than anything else to take away for themselves, because this is really at the core of what motivates me as an activist, and it's not enough to take care of yourself when you see other people suffering. I've used the analogy before that being a libertarian is like being a doctor, you know, driving by a, a scene of a bad car accident and you come up on, on the side of the freeway and you see there's a dozen people bleeding out on the side of the road. And no matter how smart you are as a doctor, you've only got two hands. And if you just jump in and, and you start to help somebody, you know that 11 other people are probably going to die. But maybe if you stand on the side of the road and yell to everybody else, I'm a doctor, I need help. You don't need to know what's going on here. I just need extra hands to stop the bleeding. Please stop what you're doing. Get out of your car, pull over and help us. People are going to die. And, and this is true with what we're talking about, libertarianism. It really is a matter of life and death. We are confronting the greatest injustices in the world today. Well, what are, they're, they're death. They're, they're innocent deaths. It, it, that's, that's what government does. It kills innocent people. Like We, we are fighting to stop that. And it, it, for me, I'm torn. Like, do, do I scream for help or do I just, do I put hands on? And in, in a sense, for a lot of people that putting hands on maybe all they see is their own situation. And I see this a lot in victims of family law in particular, but really everybody who's a victim of the state in their own way, we're all kind of bullied into silence. You know, we are all shamed into not speaking out as being embarrassed to be victims or even worse being made to feel guilty by the propaganda and the emotional manipulation so if there's one big takeaway it's that the thing i'm i'm most grateful for from your example chris and i hope from mine and from so many other activists who are inspired by our work is that when we see suffering that mirrors our own in the world we are not satisfied with alleviating our own suffering we are compelled as activists motivated by a deep-seated sense of injustice to alleviate the suffering of others all right so cj says we're we're going to be adding up super chats chris you know we were going to get heavy on that one, right we're, what are my takeaways? I mean, it's yeah, it, and and it really has to be about that at some level. I mean, I, I always want to stay happy and jovial, and I, you know, you know, I can joke at anything, but uh, at, at at some point, part of our message and part of what the, uh, the 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 world has to do to move towards libertarianism is a note of of serious soul searching to acknowledge the, the pain and suffering and the death of, of so many innocent victims of the state who have come before us. All right, Chris Cole with another $5 super chat. If I get a freedom tattoo, will you sign it so I can tattoo your signature below it? <laughs> well, uh, uh, no. Okay, so we have a new rule in our auction today. It's cumulative. And Chris Cole just took the lead with $2. Do you want to write an Adam versus the Man theme song together? You know, I I want to write an album, Chris. I want to get you out here and, you know, kind of kind of learn your your basic uh, you know, guitar singer songwriting skills. I've got like this is I've got I've got the elements. Maybe maybe not the talent. I don't know. Maybe maybe that might be that might be the thing in the middle. That would bring it all together that's that's missing in my music career but no like so i i used to sing in the choir in college 
Um, I've been in musicals. Uh, in most years, I, I was in school. I was in. I was the male lead in a musical or a play, and um, I'm I'm a competent singer when I put the effort into it. Like I know, I know enough to know how bad I am when I'm not trained and rehearsed, and my voice is shot from talking all the time. But I also I used to write poetry. I used to write. I, I used to do like in in high school. I did. Um, some some digital like you know techno compositions. That's not what I want to do, but I want to write. I want to write folk songs, you know. And so I actually have an album planned already. Believe it or not, I have a list of song titles, and I you know I think it's an I'm I'm open to exploring different musical formats, but I think there's something just about you know a dude and a guitar, or a dude and a piano. I'm a big fan of Tom Lehrer, you know. If anybody doesn't know. Should I start? Should I start no. singing? Because I could sing. 